Good afternoon, everyone. We're student representatives from the College of Human Environmental Sciences Department of Human Nutrition and Hospitality Management. My name is Sydney Cochran, and I'm a major in restaurant and hotel meetings management with a concentration on meetings and event planning. Hello, my name is Brooke Key. I'm also studying restaurant hotels and meetings management. However, my concentration is restaurants, food, and beverage. And I'm Abby Wiljunas. I'm in the Food and Nutrition Department here, and I'm currently in the Coordinated Program. So by a show of hands, how many of you use Pinterest or have heard of Pinterest before? Great. Okay. Although we represent three very diverse fields in our department, we shared a collective interest in how Pinterest, those of us who use it daily in our downtime, was affecting professionals in each of our industries. First, I just want y'all to look at that picture. One of my professors showed me this last year, Dr. Amy Ellis. She was showing us this is a carb-free, fat-free, sugar-free, kosher diet. It's ice, so it's not possible. Pinterest is having the same effect on people that this picture is. This new military diet I was looking at the other day, 10 pounds in two days. Wow, that would be really wonderful after Christmas, but it's really just not possible. This is where I think that our major is gonna go in the coming years. This is a registered dietitian nutritionist that puts up pins on, this one's obviously an underactive thyroid, but on heart health, on um, immune system functions, just give basic tips. My idea behind that is just to kind of increase the awareness. So, I'm gonna go into a consultation with my dietitian, and half the time they're gonna be wanting to like throw all this information at me because we have an hour, maybe, maybe 30 minutes, at, you know, and we're gonna try to figure out, okay, what's good for my specific disease. So if a registered dietitian nutritionist makes a secret board for their client, they can put on different recipes that will have, like underneath the recipe, I'll say, okay, well, heart health. So we know it's antioxidants, it's whole grains, it's omega-3. So I'm gonna put on 20 ways to fix a salmon, which is high in omega-3s. Underneath that recipe, I'm gonna explain to you, salmon, omega-3s. We're trying to build that habit of them not wanting to come back to us every single day and say, oh, I ran out of a recipe, I need a new one, because they're understanding how to find these foods themselves. 